Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is stories that could be interesting crossed between two books. So bits of one book dropped into another to form a synthesis. Oh, there are already some stories of that kind that I really like. Yeah. As I talked about on the Nitty Gritty Writing podcast, uh, crossovers between Sherlock Holmes and the supernatural, particularly the Sherlock Holmes crossover with Dracula, were fun because of the disjunction between Holmes' ultra-rationalism and Dracula's incredibly structured planning, but with a goal that doesn't make sense and some abilities that, whilst they make sense internally, aren't part of Holmes's rational world. So that was fun. Uh, similarly, Shadows Over Baker Street, a collection of Sherlock Holmesian characters versus the uh, Lovecraftian mythos. So again, real avatar of reason meeting the idea of a universe that is incomprehensible to human reason in one or more ways. So that was fun. So I think sort of almost anything crossed with the Cthulhu mythos would be fun. Is I like the thing of the Cthulhu mythos, that the universe isn't good or evil, it just is. But the what it is, is fundamentally inconceivable to us. And potentially we will get crushed like ants, not because of an enemy, but just because it happened. And potentially the thing that did it wouldn't notice. So adding that into almost any story, crime thriller, where someone is performing rituals for mythos purposes, but it's written as a crime thriller. Potentially, a sort of starts off as a cosy mystery. So Miss Marple, and then the evil comes. It's, uh, I was discussing this with a friend, not about books, but about the Thief series of computer games, that they start off a sort of steampunky stealth game. So you're creeping around trying not to get caught by guards, shooting arrows with damp rags on the end into torches to put the lights out so you have places to hide, knocking guards out rather than killing them because if you kill them then you've got a blood stain which someone might notice and so on. And then suddenly you encounter this bit where the things that are happening aren't rational, where there are creepy things lurking that actually change the way you perceive things. And that twist is either, I don't like this anymore, or it really adds an extra layer to the game. So I think I'm very much in the normal reality and then you discover something else bracket. So sticking the supernatural into other genres. But uh, <clears throat> moving away from the sort of creepy horror end, uh, things that other things that might be fun. Um, a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court crossed with actual high magic. Maybe the Colin Morgan. Do I mean Colin Morgan? Uh, possibly Merlin series from the BBC. So. Instead of the magicians in Connecticut Yankee being frauds, tricksters, pseudo-scientists, have magic actually be real? And just, instead of it being a time-travelling thing, he ends up somewhere else where for some reason, potentially, that isn't really explained, because it doesn't need to be explained, magic is real. So you've got 
technology versus magic. Potentially technology is easier. Everything else still works, but he's a, he's a rationalist who can do these things and thinks that other people doing flashbangs and so on are doing it using trickery the way he would. Whereas in fact, there are two parallel, equal but different methods of achieving things. And it's the same as moving a rock using levers or moving a rock using brute force. Both of them move the rock, but different people have different aptitudes for it. Different people have different beliefs in the morality of doing it one way or the other. Because there will be some people who will say that moving a rock yourself is a proof of manliness. And there'll be other people who say that straining to lift a rock when you could shift it using levers and rollers is just wasted effort. So having something where magic and science are both really big secrets to the general populace. So they're both an unusual thing, but they're not one is true, one is just a version of the other that's tricked up in a whole series of rules and secrets. Other things that could be interesting. Um, a spy theme crossed with a romance novel. It would have to be third person romance rather than first person or really deep point of view person. So that it reads sort of like a romance story in that all the trappings are there. But actually one of the people who's involved in it potentially the other protagonist rather than the main protagonist isn't this person's one true lantern head, stubble jawed, cowboy, biker, businessman, hero. They're actually doing it for another reason. They're a, they are seducing them because either they're a little bit dodgy or because the hero is someone who people would spy on. So instead of the things that seem a little bit wrong about the relationship being things that are resolved away, the things that are right about the relationship are things that are resolved away. So in the end, they don't end up together and love doesn't triumph. And that one will be a horrifically hard sell. It will be more of a sort of, I wrote this because I wanted to, rather than I wrote this because I thought it would sell really well and would be easy to market story. Because probably people who read spy thrillers don't engage immediately with romantic tropes. And people who read romance novels would like ultimately that buzz at the end where the couple end up together. But I think it would be interesting to do it that way. And then I think is where it comes into, well, what is the point of crossing two stories? I think lots of stories, crossing them is interesting in terms of discussing it sitting around, talking about it, hypothesising about how it might be, but interesting as an engaging book that you'd actually like to read and reread rather than just an intellectual curiosity is a whole other thing. Because for a lot of things, a book, however many other subplots there are, is sustained by something. In the case of fantasy, it's usually a world with a particular thing in it. So there is the spibble of Thrang that someone is trying to get to rule the world. And it might be a MacGuffin in that it doesn't do anything in the plot, or it might actually have powers that influence the plot. But they're trying to get that, and there will be rules to it. And a different story will have a different thing with different rules that are needed for that to work. 
And so if you get two stories and attempt to put them together, you're going to get some overlap and some things that go in different directions. And ultimately, it's either going to come down to, well, there aren't really any conflicts, in which case the stories probably aren't different enough that it's not just the same story with a slant. So it's a fantasy, it's the same fantasy novel, but with a little more romance. Or it's the same young adult vampire, sparkly vampire thing, only with a whole lot more emotional abuse and no vampires or whatever. Or the stories have a conflict between their primary drivers. So you've got a story that is based entirely on scientific principles being how the universe works. There is no magic. Logic works. And on the other hand, you've got something where there are rules of magic. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be science versus magic. It could be two magical systems. So you take the Harry Potter magical world and the Lord of the Rings magical world and put them together. There are certain overlaps in that both of them allow for the hurling of pine cones that explode. But the fundamental rules don't fit together. So Harry Potter takes the ring to Mount Doom would be an interesting thing to map out in terms of, well, what would happen if instead of a hobbit, it was a magician? But Harry Potter is about hope, about good people not giving in to evil, whereas The Lord of the Rings is about something that corrupts simply by being. So either you have Harry be really, really unique, which doesn't quite work, given that, well, he was resistant to Voldemort, but he wasn't resistant to all evil magics. Or you have Harry fall, in which case you don't have a Samwise-like figure to save him, unless you have Neville turn out to be the chosen one and turn up at the end, take the ring and so on. But it's hard to slot vastly different stories together without either ending up with something that isn't recognisably either of them because you've changed something or loses the interest of one of them. So what do you think? Two different stories that fit together well, or would fit together in a way that would actually make for an interesting book. What ideas do you have? What do you think wouldn't work? Comment in wherever the comments are. Comments there. Comment. Anyway, I'm blathering a bit, so I'd probably wrap it up there. Toodaloo.